Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we're taking a look at another system addition to the Fly-by-Wire A32NX mod for the default A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is of course the hydraulic systems which were added a little while ago but it's taken us uh, a bit of time to get around to, to seeing them on the channel but it's great they have uh, matured into a really really nice simulation of the, uh, the hydraulic system on the Airbus and today we're going to look at what that system actually involves what it does for us as uh, pilots of the airbus and also what it does to look after us when things uh, maybe don't go as planned or one of the systems fails we are going to be using the uh, latest development version of the a32nx mod that's the current version i've been using uh, recently at the time of making this video and uh, we're going to be starting from here in bilbao as we start on stand and head out for a bit of a short flight just to demonstrate some of these systems you can see uh, the PMDG DC-6 sitting over there, so it's quite fun having that now that I've got it in my uh, aircraft library. Uh, anyway, yeah, so this is a uh, video just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. I am a real-world Airbus pilot, but of course none of this is for any real-world use. Let's jump into the video. So starting here on stand then, on the flight deck, and uh, let's talk about what the hydraulics actually do for us uh, on the Airbus. The Airbus is a modern jet airliner, so it's it's very fast through the air, which means that there's a lot of air pressure on those flight controls. In the old days, we would control the flight controls, like in a Cessna or any of the, the general aviation airplanes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, but you can control it by pulling on the control column, or in this case our joystick, and that would pull on the wires underneath, and that would pull on the flight control. And that works fine in smaller aircraft, but in heavy aircraft traveling at the speeds that we do in the Airbus, it's not practical because the aerodynamic forces are more than you can overpower with just this small, uh, small side stick. So hydraulic systems provide power for those, uh, those flight controls. How hydraulics work is a big topic that I'm not really qualified to explain, but uh, it basically runs high pressure fluid in small pipes between um, the uh, hydraulic motors and the actual flight controls, and then that can power them um, by using the pressure in the system to move that flight control surface so they're incredibly powerful they can actually uh, yeah there's no there's no speed limit on the speed brakes for example and uh, those come up just using hydraulic pressure from behind them that lift them up into the airflow so that just to give you some idea of how how powerful these these hydraulic systems can be they're under very high pressure 3000 psi to give you some context on what 3000 psi is the air pressure in the airplane um, compared to the outside in the cruise can be around around about um, up to 8 psi so 8 pounds per square inch of pressure on like the windows and the the, the structure of the aircraft 8 the hydraulic systems will run at usually 3000 psi 3000 pounds per square inch so they are incredibly high pressure very dangerous you don't want to be near one of these pipes if they were to rupture because the pressure coming out of it is incredible so that's what the hydraulic systems are so let's power up the aircraft and take a look at uh, some of the initial checks we would do on it okay so the airplane is now powered up and let's take a look at uh, the hydraulic systems so the first thing i'm going to do is look at the overhead panel this is where we can interact with the hydraulic systems uh, up on this hydraulic panel and you'll notice it's one of the, the smallest ones um, we don't use this much, it's pretty much self-sustaining um, when things are running well and there's very few reasons we need to use it even if there's a problem with one of the systems. It's quite automatic as you'd expect in the Airbus really. So you can see it labelled on the side, hydraulic, and uh, yeah we've got the switches. So there's an engine 1 pump, a blue electrical pump, PTU, engine 2 pump, yellow electrical pump, and this is the ram air turbine. So that might not sound a bit complicated, but uh, what's going to be easier is if I show you the systems page and then we'll talk through what these buttons actually mean. So coming down to the lower ECAM and we can go to the hydraulic by pressing hydraulic and this has been added. It's simulated underneath the uh, the images as well which is what's nice about this so it, it's a really good good uh, representation. So at the moment we have all three systems shown green, blue and yellow so there are three hydraulic systems. Each one is capable of flying the aircraft safely on its own. As I said earlier, these control the flight control services, but also some other heavy duty systems. Those are uh, the landing gear, obviously, uh, needs to be powered by hydraulics because uh, it could, you know, you could use electric motors and so on. Um, and these are other options, but they are done hydraulically typically because we already have a hydraulic system for the flight controls. So landing gear will be hydraulic, flaps will be hydraulic, 
the brakes are hydraulic and uh, obviously the, the flight controls we talked about earlier are all going to run on hydraulic systems um, and that's pretty much the main things other things that can be affected would be the reversers the engine reverse doors might be hydraulic hydraulically actuated uh, and trimming so trimming using the uh, horizontal stabilizer at the back will be hydraulic as well in in aircraft of this size so here we go then we have the three systems and as i said each one can power the or fly the aircraft safely now they don't all control all of the flight control services if we go to the flight control page if i press that you can actually see gby bg bg gby gy so these little um little letters here let me try and get a closer view for you guys because that's uh yeah that's not not ideal in fact that's going to be a there we go right um you can see uh that these are all written out these show you which system powers those controls so green blue and yellow control various of the spoilers that's the all speed brakes as they're shown here the right aileron is powered by the green and blue system the left aileron is powered by the blue and green system so you can see that if we lose two systems for example green and blue We've still got um, a chance to roll the aircraft using the yellow system and the speed brakes, the roll spoilers. Likewise, the elevator, very important. The left elevator is run on blue and green, but the right elevator is run on yellow and blue. So even if we lost both the blue and yellow systems, we'd have the green and any combination you can think of. So um, it's, it's carefully designed to make sure that the aircraft is controllable in, in pitch and roll, no matter which of these has failed. So let's go back to the hydraulic page and here we go. So what are we looking for on this page when we sit down in the aircraft? Well, one of the things is the hydraulic quantity. Um, that is shown here. Let me move the camera around a bit. There we go. Um, the hydraulic quantity is shown along the bottom of the screen. So this little arrow, I know it doesn't look quite like an arrow, but it is, um, and it's pointing to the hydraulic level. So hydraulic systems use fluid in these pressurized pipes running to these flight controls. Now don't get confused, this is a fly-by-wire aircraft, so our, our joystick does not power directly the hydraulics. What our joystick does, or the side stick in the Airbus, it sends an electrical signal to the hydraulic system sitting out there by the flight controls. It doesn't run from the side stick all the way to the flight control, that's the point. It, it makes it a bit lighter, more reliable, but there we go. Anyway, <laughs> ignoring that, we're talking about hydraulics today. Um, yeah, so we need fluid in the system, very important. The fluid's very carefully designed. It runs at very high pressure, and obviously we don't want it getting hot or turning to jelly or anything like that because it won't be so useful. And there's a series of pumps that keep it at pressure. So here is the fluid reservoir. So there's fluid in the system, and then there's a reservoir which needs a certain amount of fluid in it. If this reservoir starts to go down, there could be a leak. It could be a sign that the hydraulic fluid has leaked out of the system, in which case it will either need topping up or the leak will need finding if it's not through normal sort of usage. These reservoirs are actually pressurized, so during the flight, air pressure from the engines is fed in to keep these reservoirs uh, under higher air pressure. That way they won't cavitate, i.e. start to sort of bubble and evaporate when we go up to higher flight levels. But there we go, so we have all three reservoirs shown. And you'll notice the yellow system is actually sitting above the little marker. So this marker here is the green area. So we want this arrow to sit in the green area. So for the green system, that's looking good. The blue system, it looks good. The yellow system is actually over the top. But this is quite common. This can also be below the bottom, sometimes, rarely, but it does happen. Um, these actually go up and down depending on where the, some of the systems are. So um, this can be to do with where the, the cargo doors, for example, which are also hydraulically powered, um, if they're open or closed, it might change where the position of that, that uh, level is. But it should be in the green at the start of the flight. So there we go. You'll see the pressure is shown up here as zero, zero, zero. That's because they are all obviously unpowered. You've got the um, low warning here, which is from the pumps. So this is an electric pump on the blue system. The blue system is not driven by an engine. It's driven by its own electrical pump. Then you've got the green and yellow systems, which are driven by engine pumps. Yellow, obviously, the engine two pump. Green, the engine one pump. So there's low pressure, and we can see the pumps are also running at low. Right. That is a basic picture of uh, the hydraulics. The green system, just to give you an idea of what this system runs, um, this is the sort of, you could consider it the primary system. The green is a good system. It, it does a lot of things. Um, this powers, obviously, we've seen earlier, rudder, um, some of the ailerons, some of the slats and flaps. So it, it's, uh, it can be, as long as you've got the green system, you've got a lot of your systems. It also powers normal brakes, very important for landing, of course. Um, which brings me on to the next thing. Here we have this little pressure gauge, which you'll see me check a lot in streams and flights. 
So what this little dial is telling us is, first of all, the bottom two needles point to the brake pressure. That is the parking brake or the yellow system brake pressure. So you'll see that it's right, it's, they're sitting at just over 1000 PSI on each side. That's because the parking brake is set. We can see parking brake is on up here. The accumulator pressure is a backup system. So in hydraulic systems, you can have what's called an accumulator. That means that even if we suddenly lost all hydraulic pressure, but as long as there's still fluid in the system, um, even with zero pressure, the accumulator could be used to apply pressure. It, it, it has a way of storing pressure. It's like a little battery for the hydraulics. It doesn't give you much. It won't. You won't be able to drive the landing gear up or down using the accumulator. But crucially, what it does give us is a bit of braking. So we can apply the brakes a few times just using the accumulator, and that will drain it to zero, but that's no problem. That's what it's there for in an emergency. Very rare, very, very rare, but that's what it's there for. So we want this to be in the green band before flight as well. Now it isn't, and there's a reason why, and this is great to see this simulated. It's very common for it to be down here. Um, but you can see the brake pressure is on, so I know the parking brake is set, but it's not good enough to look here. You'll look at your parking brake switch down here, and you'll also look at your ECAM, and what we always do is look at our dial here to check there is pressure being applied because this is the actual reading of the pressure on those brake discs so we know the airplane is being held still great so this accumulator can lose pressure overnight um, it can uh, obviously maybe certain systems were used after the aircraft was powered down by accident or anything like that but anyway it, it's drained down a little bit that's no problem um, what usually happens is the ground crew will come along at some point and open up the cargo doors when the airplane has power so we have electrical power now so we can run the yellow electric pump. So moving to the overhead panel, this is going to be a very in-depth video I'm just beginning to realize. Um, up on the hydraulic panel, up here, um, what happens is when they open the cargo door, automatically the electric pump, the yellow electric pump would run. Um, so that I don't need to turn it on on the flight deck, they will just open the door and the yellow pump will run. What I'm going to do is let's see if I ask the ground staff to load on some bags, that door will open, there it is, and I'm waiting to see, oh there it goes. So that, if I look at the hydraulic page, is running the yellow electrical pump, the backup pump, you can see, giving your yellow system 3000 PSI, and that's driven that needle into the green, which is where it would sit automatically as long as there's some pressure. And that's typically what happens day to day, you know, that's great, really impressive. So um, yeah, there you go, we've now got accumulated pressure, and then when the doors open, the pump will just switch off and it will drain. You'll notice, this thing called a PTU, a power transfer unit. What that does is, if we lost, for example, engine number one over here, the green system, then we'll get low pressure in that pump and the system will start to lose pressure. If the power transfer unit senses that, it will transfer its power from the yellow system, it can use the pressure in that system, and it can use that to then provide pressure into the green system. So it will run the pressure into that green system. You'll notice that we had low pressure in the green system just then, but the PTU did not activate. It doesn't when the ground crew run the cargo door. So uh, it, it just runs the yellow system. However, if I turn on the yellow system to top up the accumulator, like that, same thing happens. The electrical pump comes on and it powers the yellow system. So this is a backup instead of the engine pump. But you'll notice the PTU is also running. That's because I'm running it from the flight deck. So that's what happens. Uh, it, will, um, it will actually if you do it from the flight deck, power both systems. Why is this a problem? Well, you'll have noticed when you board an aircraft, often the flight controls are sort of sitting loose. So the ailerons might be uh, drooping down on the wings, um, the elevator drooping down, the rudder often just gets blown with the wind left or right, whichever way the wind is. So if you then power the hydraulics like we've just done, you get the, um, suddenly the flight controls will all move into position. So you don't want, you could have ground crew fiddling, there may be engineers working on a, uh, something, so you need to be very careful that you don't cause any other problems by powering the flight controls. So we would always check the aircraft is clear around before doing that. Now that pump is running, we can actually take the drone outside and you'll hear that high pitched whine, very distinctive and very audible when you're doing your walk around, which tells me that the yellow pump is running because I've turned it on upstairs. So let's have a listen.
So there we go. Um, that is the power transfer unit running. And something to point out, it's 3000 PSI when driven by the electric or the engine pumps in the hydraulic systems. But you'll notice it's only running at 2800 in the green system. That's because the PTU roughly powers to about 2500 PSI, more than enough to move the, the surfaces. Something else I want to point out is that if this quantity down here ran to zero, if this system ran empty, this wouldn't work. You need fluid in the system. So a fluid leak is a loss of the system. No power transfer can help it. Um, it just means the system's empty. So we don't want uh, we don't want to risk failing another system. So actually the PTU will be inhibited in that case. It will actually stop itself from running if it senses um, that there's an overheat or a low level in the, uh, the system it's trying to save. Okay, so I'm going to put the airplane back in its normal configuration. Yellow electric pump is off. Let's turn that off. Those systems will slowly depressurize. And uh, yeah, we have accumulated pressure. So that's all looking good. And the parking brake is set at a nice high pressure. So next we're going to push back and start up an engine. Okay, so uh, now we're going to start up the engine. The pushback's complete, the tug's driven off. Let's start up engine number one. I'm doing number one first today because we're going to do a single engine taxi so I can demonstrate some things about the hydraulic system. So let's put the master switch, sorry, the motor switch to ignition and start up engine number one. Goes forward and we'll start the clock. So this engine is now going to start up and power which hydraulic system? The green. It's going to power the green hydraulic system when it's up and running. The reason we can taxi single engine in this configuration is because the green system will run from engine number one. And what I'm going to do is when the engine started, I'm going to power the yellow system with the ele yellow electric pump. That way we have both of our hydraulic systems. It means we have our normal and our alternate brakes, even though we only have one, one engine running. If we were to try and taxi out using number two only, uh, we would risk losing uh, some systems such as the um, nose wheel steering and some other systems. It depends on some of the aircraft uh, configurations. Now you might say, well, why doesn't the power transfer unit just power the other hydraulic system so we'd have all the systems anyway? It does, but only when you're um, with the parking brake released and a few other sort of little tricks <laughs> to do with it. So it's not as slick of a system. But this way, the aircraft will be essentially in a normal configuration. If we look at hydraulics, there's a green system powered up running as normal engines available so I'll put that back to norm and I'm going to leave the APU on there is a reason for that we're going to use it for start but I'm going to turn on the yellow electric pump that way we've got the green and the yellow system the blue system runs like normal on its um, own hydraulic pump green and the yellow are the main systems they do the bulk of the work the blue is more of a backup but there we go so there we go yellow electric pump running so that's all good and the PTU is not running now we can move the flight controls. So let's put the flaps out for takeoff. Um, and we would set our trims, arm the ground spoilers, and so on. Now it is possible if you forget to put that yellow electric pump on, the flaps will actually be a bit slower because they're powered by the green and the yellow. So uh, they would actually run slightly slower when they're running under, off just one hydraulic system. The flaps, for obvious reasons, are huge, huge hydraulic loads. Those in the landing gear both, both take a huge strain on the hydraulic systems. So if you're only running the flaps on one system, then that is uh, it's quite hard for the system to do and they will therefore run slower. So you've got all the leading edge slats, you've got the flaps along the back, um, and yes, they're all run on green, blue, yellow and all sorts, but uh, yeah, essentially very big, heavy draw system. So this is the configuration with which we could do a single engine taxi. I should probably do a whole video on that on its own, um, but this is just to show you our hydraulics. Great, so that's all, all fine, you might think. Um, and yeah, it pretty much is. but. As we talked about earlier, we don't actually need that yellow pump. I could turn that off. So now I've turned off that yellow system pump. It's run to zero, and you'll notice the PTU hasn't kicked in. Um, why is that? Well, that's to do with the uh, parking brake, as I mentioned earlier. So if I release the parking brake, that enables the PTU to run. It powers the yellow system, and we have a fully serviceable airplane. The PTU provides that famous barking dog noise that you're familiar with in the cabin of the Airbus. So if you're sitting in a seat... Uh, 
somewhere here or even, usually even further back you'd hear that um, that sort of slight uh, sort of barking noise and that's the PTU turning on and off providing pressure to the other hydraulic system so if you hear that running constantly it could be a single engine taxi um, that doesn't use the other hydraulic pump for whatever reason that might be Sadly, at the moment I can't seem to get it to work. It doesn't work here and I went to the flight deck and I enabled PTU audible in the cockpit in the audio settings but it can't, I can't seem to hear it. This could be something I'm doing wrong. But uh, there we go. So uh, that was there at one point. It might return. So you, if you hear that, that will be what it is. It's that PTU running. So of course it's time to taxi now. So let's um, move forward. As you can see, yellow system being powered by that PTU. But let's turn on our yellow electric pump have it in a more happy configuration. It's much more reassuring when you know all the systems are working, even if you uh, leave the um, parking brake on. <laughs> so we're taxiing to our left. Not a great way to... That's too much thrust there. You don't want to go sort of in busy areas like this. You don't want to rev the engine up even as high as I've got it there. But this is a very bad idea to do single engine taxi with a sharp 90 degree turn into the engine. You'll see it's actually really quite difficult and the airplane can slide a bit. So what you need to do is roll forward first and then... Uh, then get a bit of speed going before you turn. If you're trying to use the thrust, you'd be amazed how easy it is to drag that nose wheel over the ground. It doesn't have a lot of weight on it compared to the um, distribution of the airplane, but there we go. Right, so we're going to head out. Something you'll notice when I release that parking brake. Let's squeeze on the tow brakes and set it. So we're stopped now. Um, if I set the brake, so now that parking brake is set, you'll see that those needles pop up, showing me I have brake pressure there. You'll notice the accumulator does not go down because the systems are both pressurized, so they can keep topping up the accumulator. So it will sit there with that pressure until there's an emergency. So let's take those brakes off and now carry on. And this is a typical, as I said, single engine taxi configuration. So let's start up the other engine. I don't actually need that electric pump. I can turn that off, put the APU bleed on, put the mode switch to ignition, start engine number two. Now there would actually be a bit of a delay there in real life. You need to wait for pressure to arrive. It does take a second for the airplane to, to get that air pressure sorted out as you're swapping around systems. And as you can see, even with that yellow pump off, we've got our nose wheel steering. Airplane's quite capable to taxi. Right, so the engines are both running. We're in a sort of normal before takeoff configuration now. Um, and what I want to do is show you some failures of the brakes and the hydraulic system. Obviously, a big concern with the brakes are the um, stopping on the ground after landing. So that's the hydraulics job, really. We don't have any, without the hydraulic system, we don't have any brakes. So they're very important. That's why we have a green system powering the normal brakes, which is what I'm using now. So now if I go to my hydraulics page, it's all in totally normal configuration. All the pumps are off. Sorry, not off. <laughs> They're all on like normal, um, but we're not using any electric pumps for the main systems. They're both being driven by the engine. So green system by engine one, yellow by engine two, blue system by its own pump. The yellow electric pump is off. So we're taxing along, and if I squeeze the tow brakes, that runs on the green system. And you don't notice anything. We don't see any needle movement over here either. They stay still, as they should do. There is another brake system which we can use in case there's a problem with the green system and that is the alternate brakes. They run off the yellow system. So if I turn off the engine one pump which will be the green system and I turn off the PTU because otherwise of course that system will just pressurize. On our hydraulics page we can see the green's depressurizing and I've turned off the PTU so it can't run across there. Now we're using the alternate brakes. Now there should be cautions, there should be a, a warning and so on. So that's not quite modelled yet, but what is modelled is the actual system. So if you now look at the needles, when I squeeze those brakes, those needles move up because now the yellow system, which also provides the parking brake, which goes through these needles, is now supplying the brake pressure. So I can actually see that represented. So by squeezing those pedals, I'm using the yellow system, which turns these on. We actually do a check. So when we taxi out the aircraft, and just as we release the parking brake, just as we start moving, we do what's called a brake check. When we do that, we just squeeze the brakes just a little bit. We don't need to stop the aircraft, but what we're doing is checking that the brake system actually works and slows down the airplane. And we're also checking that the um, uh, these needles don't move up. They can do a little blip, but if they actually move up and stay up, that means the normal brake system hasn't taken over and we're running on the alternate brakes, which is no good. Uh, we need to resolve it. So that's what we do there. That's what the brake check's for. 
There's a little green arc which is to do with landing without uh, um, the normal brakes. What that is is if we land and we don't have normal brakes, there's no anti-skid available on this system. So we have to moderate the brake pressure to 1000 psi which is about there. If we go too high like that during our landing just by squeezing on the brakes then we will lock the wheels and potentially slide or burst a tyre. Not a, not a risk on a normal landing because normally we have anti-skid which totally uh, makes, stops that being a problem. We can also swap over to the alternate um, braking system by turning this off and you'll see brakes anti-skid nose wheel steering off that turns off the anti-skid and it will put the brakes to the alternate system uh, and force that to happen. So uh, you can see by doing that, we've limited it to a thousand PSI. So that's good actually. So the modern aircraft, they automatically limit that brake pressure to a thousand, which is what we can see being represented here. So I'm going full down on the pedals and it only goes to a thousand. So that, that is on modern aircraft. On the older aircraft, that system wasn't there. So that's all to do with landing, but yeah, great to see that simulated. So if you turn that off, that swaps over. So out of curiosity, if I turn on the green system and the PTU, so the hydraulics are now running, all like normal, but I turn off my anti-skid nose or steering, I should move to the alternate brakes, which I do, and there you go, and it goes to 1000 psi, and that's despite all my hydraulics working, that's because I'm forcing it to use the alternate system. There is actually a way to swap systems as well, but that's a whole other, that's another story. <laughs> uh, but there we go, so hydraulics running as normal, airplane running as normal, uh, brakes back to normal, and you'll see those needles down at zero. So finally then, before we get in the air, let's look at turning off all the hydraulics. So engine 1 pump off, PTU off, won't matter because I'm turning off engine 2 pump. I'm leaving the yellow electric pump off and the electric pump for the blue system is in auto. I'm going to turn it off. Won't matter actually the blue system because it doesn't power this but there we go. So now we've got no hydraulics left. Disaster you might be thinking. Well, oh dear we are causing a queue. <laughs> um, the good news is that accumulator is there. So if I now squeeze on the brakes you'll see that that accumulator has moved. I can get a better view for you guys. There we go. And now I let go of the brakes and then I squeeze them again and you'll see it move again. If I squeeze them more, it moves a bit more. So you get just a few applications of the brakes. Now I can hold the brakes here and there's no problem because the accumulator's done its job, it's applied that pressure and it will just stay there. The problem is reapplying. As I keep reapplying my brakes, that pressure will keep dropping. But you'll see we do have some brakes without any hydraulics and that's what it's there for. Often pilots, when they're taxiing the Airbus onto stand, just as we're look, about to go onto stand, what you'll check is that this gauge shows some accumulator pressure. The reason we do that is as we're driving onto stand, the last thing we want is to find that we have, uh, who knows what, a double engine failure, a hydraulic system loss, something like that, um, and we are pointing at the terminal building. So by checking the accumulators working and we have pressure in it, then we know that we've got a backup worst case scenario. Um, we can bring the airplane safely to a stop using that accumulator and you'll see there we go I think actually in real life you get a few less applications than this um, but it will depend on the age of the airplane I imagine and all sorts right let's get it all back to normal get ourselves in the air Okay, so finally, let's get ourselves into the air and see how the hydraulic systems interact with us in flight. So, 50% on the N1s. Start the clock. I will put the terrain radar on, actually. Not radar, display, I should say. 50%, release the brakes. Two clicks forward. There we go, Manflex 69. SRS, order thrust is blue and half size stick forward. Fly-by-wire mod has come a long way. These takeoffs now are getting really close to the real thing. We have a lot of accurate systems and displays going on here which is great there's 100 knots and v1 rotate up we go rotate law working wonderfully as always positive climb gear up there's nav mode and that's us leaving bilbao thanks for having us bilbao absolute joy flying this aircraft in microsoft flight simulator these days what a pilot one. OK, 
Okay, so in flight then, we're accelerating. We've used those hydraulics to get those flaps in. Let's have a look at uh, how these systems would behave in flight. So just a bit of a refresher, really. You can see now that the three quantities are sort of equalized. The blue system is actually drained down a bit. Um, and yeah, this is normal in flight. They, they can move about a bit. So it's nice to see them not all perfectly aligned. That's, that's very, very good, very accurate. In flight then, if we were to lose a hydraulic system, um, we would typically lose the fluid in that system. So if I lost the green system now, the green quantity, for example, i.e. there was a hole in one of the lines and we lose pressure, then we'd lose the green system altogether. To simulate that, I can turn off the green engine one pump. But remember, I also need to turn off the power transfer unit, otherwise uh, it will just power it from the yellow system. So there we go, green system is running down. It will lose pressure and the red aircraft would get all sorts of cautions and dings at this point to alert us but losing a single system not a big deal really it does cause us some problems as we saw earlier some things like flaps and slats will now be slower if we look at our flight control page the biggest concern there you go we've lost the inboard and outboard of the speed brakes or roll spoilers we've got one of the ailerons uh, systems is gone now the green on both sides but blue is powering both the ailerons itself and with the elevator we have two systems still on one of them and obviously one on the other the reason is um, the ailerons can be redundant. You could lose both ailerons and still roll the aircraft quite happily with the roll spoilers. It, it would be no problem at all. Um, so to simulate that, we could lose the blue system. Now, we're getting into a complex failure here, which is something that uh, is a video on itself. But if I turn off the blue system, just to give you a bit of a taster, um, hydraulic page, that will now power down. There we go. And on the flight control page, We've still got two roll spoilers, no ailerons, um, one elevator and the rudder and we do that, luckily have that pitch trim still. So the airplane very controllable in this situation. This is where the limitations of this um, modern Microsoft Flight Simulator start to show a little bit. Um, although we've done this properly and it shows the right system failures here, we don't actually have those controls failed, they're still actually moving as you can see. Um, if I take out the autopilot, you can see the elevator moving uh, both sides as well. So. That's the, uh, that would be nice to see changed to get those flight controls at responding accurately to what we're seeing on the systems pages. But this is accurate to the systems page as to what you would expect to happen. So we can turn all those back on, get the airplane back to normal. now in X-Plane 11 using the utterly fantastic TOLIS A321 uh, aircraft. This is version 1.3, the latest update, along with the Neo engines and of course the classic man delivery um, done by our fantastic community converted over into X-Plane. So we are in Bilbao again, ready for takeoff, but I just want to show you some of the failures just to expand on what happens when these hydraulic systems don't quite work because the TOLIS is a very complete product and includes all the uh, failures you would expect. Really amazing. So we'll jump into the cockpit and as you can see we are set up in the same position but uh, just to prove to you of course this works in the tow list if you look at the brake pressure i'm taking off the parking brake now they go down using the tow brakes it stays down i'll do the same thing i'll turn off the anti-skid nose wheel steering and that will swap us to alternate brakes we get the ecam brakes anti-skid nose wheel steering off max pressure 1000 psi we also get the wheel page automatically showing up which says nose wheel steering is no longer working anti-skid is no longer working and you'll see here normal brakes not working the yellow system is supplying the alternate brakes and the accumulator pressure this may have been working this page in the uh, fly-by-wire i'm not sure but there we go and you can see that it's automatically put the needles um, just to a thousand psi there and we can run those as we are so all working exactly as we saw before let's turn that back on we'll go to the normal system that status page is removed put the auto brake on so now, if I was to turn off the green system and the PTU, we'd end up with this. Green engine one pump low pressure, and then you get the boxed item, which is green system low pressure. Down it goes, and you can see the extra warnings, flight control and wheel warnings up here. If I go to the status page, you can see the issues. We've lost the green hydraulics, spoiler one and five, your damper one, cat three dual. So we can still auto land, but not to cat three dual capability, just cat three single, so cat three A. Uh, landing gear retract system's broken so we won't get the wheels up the reversal one won't work after we land and there's that slats flap slow message i was talking about so if i now move the flaps which is on one hydraulic system i would say mm, that's probably a little bit fast no the, the real one would be slower than that um when it when you get that slow message they are really slow <laughs> 
um, you do have to give yourself a bit of extra space but there you go so that is all simulated uh, in the tow list so let's turn those back on that should remove those you might hear the ptu groaning every now and then let's get into the air and have a look at uh, some other things that could happen so here we are now in the climb aircraft normal and let's have a look at some of those uh, failures we could find oh tcas should be on tr8 there we go um, so let's do the same thing again. So let's imagine we lose. Let's lose the yellow system this time. So yellow pump off and PTU off. There's that warning. Yellow system low pressure. Yellow system's dead and the PTU is not running. Um, because I've turned it off, it would otherwise just power the system. If we look at our flight control page, you'll see that we've lost some of the roll spoilers. So number four and number two. This is all as we would expect. The difference now is if I take out the autopilot and move the flight controls, you'll see they don't actually move. So that is uh, what I would expect from the real aircraft. Just going to pull heading here and put that autopilot in. Great. So let's now get rid of the blue system as well. So I turn the blue pump off. Again, we, we would not do this in the real aircraft, of course. We would uh, very much not want to be in this situation. You get the master warning because this is now a complex failure. It's, it's very serious and it gives you that land ASAP in red warning, meaning that they want the airplane on the ground relatively quickly. Now, that's not an excuse to rush because we need to carefully manage the airplane now. There's a lot of things to do. This is a huge topic and I will not be going into the dual hydraulics failures in today's video. Um, but just to give you an idea, this is the sort of thing ECAM is going to start telling you. And you'll see we've lost three of those roll spoilers, but we've got both ailerons in this case. We have lost one elevator. So let's take out the autopilot and I can now show you, because the TODIS does simulate it, that that other one is just sitting there pretty much uh, not working. If we go outside the aircraft and zoom in, I'm imagining, there you go, just that left elevator is working. Same for the roll, if you look at that, it's slightly more sluggish than you'd expect otherwise. We've just got that outboard roll spoiler running. If I jump inside, there you go. Uh, in fact, let's go to a more rearward view. Here we go. Um, yeah, you'll see that just that very outboard roll spoiler is now functioning. So this is an example of how the hydraulics are affected. We're now, of course, in alternate law and so on. There's all other things going on. You'll notice that uh, the inboard spoiler, this spoiler panel here, is operational. Um, back in the flight deck, you can see that. This one in here. But it doesn't actually deploy when you roll because it's used on the ground. It's not used for, for rolling the aircraft. It's a, it's a ground spoiler, effectively. So that's just a bit of an example of um, some of the, the underlying failures uh, or responses we'd get from the airplane if we've lost um, the hydraulics like that. You would imagine, of course, that the worst systems to lose would be the green and the um, yellow. Put you in this configuration, another master warning because it's a separate complex failure. Let me turn off those flight directors that we're no longer using. Um, yeah, so this is pretty bad. Uh, we've now only got that inboard uh, roll spoiler. We do get both ailerons in this configuration, um, which is pretty good because we've got the blue system. And uh, we've also got both elevators, so yeah, it's quite, it's very clever. But don't forget, this does rely on having all the fluid in the uh, in the hydraulic system. So now there you go, just that inboard roll, roll spoiler working for us. Amazing work by Toyota, of course. This is incredible detail to have in a simulator. You'll notice as well the flaps are actually amber. We've lost all our flaps, only slats. But you would be amazed at how um, the approach is not too badly affected by that, but it's a whole video on its own. So this would be a flapless landing, just with some slats. To reassure you though, a far more likely scenario would be one like this. You maybe lose the green engine pump or something like that. So the PTU powers it and you end up in a completely functional airplane just without one pump running and the typical worst case would be to lose a whole, a whole system. There is one last uh, backup we have. If we've lost both the hydraulic pumps for some reason, or we've lost both the green and yellow systems, for example, they've lost fluid, we know master warning, um, there's no point, the PTU won't be able to do anything because there's no pressure in either of those systems, they're both running low, and the blue system's running on its electric pump. But what if that electric pump fails while we're flying along? Absolute disaster. Well now, the ram air turbine will have to be deployed. That's the rat here. So you can see that the yellow system is powered by an engine pump or an electric pump uh, and the P or the PTU. The um, green system is powered by the engine pump or the PTU and the blue system is an electric pump or the ram air turbine. Now for now, the ram air turbine is not out. 
The ramming turbine is a little fan that spins out in the airflow and it comes out underneath the aircraft. I don't think there's a visual model for it, but if we turn it on ourselves, we can deploy it. That will now spin and it can be used to generate electrical power. Yeah, it's not. No oh, yes, there it is. There's the ram air turbine. I'm not sure we've had that before. So that spins in the airflow and that can give us electrical or hydraulic power if we need it, i.e. if we've lost both our engines. And now, look at that. We've got the blue system back using the ram air turbine at 2,500 psi and the airplane's controllable again. So we can lose a lot of systems in the Airbus and you've still got hydraulic control of the aircraft. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing piece of design. So that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. It's a really great system to see added by the fly-by-wire team. Amazing piece of work. I can't imagine the effort that goes into making these things work. Uh, I'd love to see the flight controls respond as we would expect in the future. Hopefully that comes one day as failures start to get added to the aircraft. But yeah, absolutely incredible piece of work by the fly-by-wire team. There'll be plenty more guides like this on the Airbus as well as live streams in it as well as live streams in uh, plenty of different airliners and aircraft coming soon to the channel. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. Otherwise, we'll see you again in another of those videos or live streams soon. Thank you all very much for watching and bye-bye.